Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. In this video we're finally going to finish off our car reviews from update 1.40 or spec 2, leaving perhaps the most hyped of the bunch until last, the Lexus LFA. This was definitely one of those cars that was perhaps the most requested in the history of GT7. You know, it was on the leaked car list and then ever since then, as soon as the silhouettes would show up, people would be asking when's the LFA coming and obviously it finally did arrive with spec 2 or update 1.40. Now the Lexus LFA itself is an absolute legend and we're going to deep dive into this car today. In terms of the price point, it's looking at 1.5 million credits for this vehicle due to the current situation with credits in GT7. This isn't really good going to break the bank. You're looking at a performance point rating of 590.98, 552 brake horsepower, 1480 kilograms, naturally aspirated, screaming V10, perhaps one of the most legendary exhaust notes ever created. So let's dive straight into the review. So if you've never joined me for a car review, this is exactly how it's going to work. Because this is a road car, it's going to be eligible for two of our lap time leaderboards. So the first is the standard stock version. Uh, so we take it for a hot lap around the Nordschleife. And then we see where it ranks straight out of the factory or from Brand Central and stuff um, on our lap time leaderboard. Then we fully modify it, upgrade it as much as possible and take it for a lap around the high speed ring for our fully upgraded lap time leaderboard. And that's how this review is going to work. I'll give you some facts. I'll give you some rundown on the vehicle how it handles in GT7 and if it's really worth your time. So the Lexus LFA, I think we you know, don't really need to say too much in terms of an introduction of this vehicle. It's an absolute legend among car enthusiasts. It's just one of those vehicles that when it was released, it was very much loved for that you know, iconic exhaust note and such, but you feel like it was kind of underrated. Again, it was a supercar essentially coming from a brand that usually kind of went for luxury vehicles. And I think in that sense, it was kind of very much overlooked in comparison to cars that came you know after it the likes of the Lamborghini Aventador I believe was released um, a year later in 2011 or so um, so again in terms of Lexus LFA it just seems a bit like a cult classic it's one of those vehicles that you know kind of released you know it was like okay this is absolutely amazing but then kind of just kind of fell back until a few years later people just kind of realized just how absolutely incredible this vehicle is and again I do feel like the Lexus badge itself actually Actually turned many people away from actually you know loving this vehicle the way it really deserved especially at first I think you know as time's gone on um, this vehicle's definitely warmed in terms of its overall opinion to you know a mass audience so let me give you a few rundown and facts about the Lexus LFA itself because this is a seriously interesting car Okay, fact time about the Lexus LFA. So it does include digital rev dash. Um, again, in terms of the year that this was released, this was very much a futuristic thing. It was is kind of common, like you, you know, you kind of get this in almost any car um, these days. Any modern vehicle seems to include digital dashes, uh, but this did have it all the way back then. And the, the main reason for it was just because the analog, um, you know, clocks that you usually get in cars of that time just wouldn't be able to keep up with the absolute intensity insane amount of revs that this car produces it does include a 4 litre uh, 4.8 litre uh, v10 engine which obviously produces that amazing formula one sounding scream that became so uh, synonymous with this vehicle obviously it was co-developed with yamaha in terms of its output 552 brake horsepower and that will propel you to 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds going on to a top speed of 202 miles per hour and in terms of the rev well, it's going to be up to 9,000 RPM. In terms of the Lexus LFA, they actually never made any money off these vehicles. This is quite a you know common fact about the car that every time one of these was made and sold, it never actually made Lexus any money. It was pretty much a full passion project. They made it you know pretty much nothing off of the sale of these vehicles. There was actually a special edition. You can kind of see that with some of the kits that are in GT7. That was the Nürburgring edition. This included an extra 10 horsepower and a lot more air especially in terms of overall aggressive uh, looking aero and again it was a very successful vehicle that was obviously basically you know made around the performance of the Nordschleife or the Nürburgring. 
So it's all good shooting facts at you, but what is this car actually like in terms of Gran Turismo 7? Did they absolutely nail it? Was it worth the wait? Was it worth the hype? Are all these people that were asking for this car, you know, for almost over a year, um, you know, absolutely crazy to ask for this thing? Well, no, it's an absolutely amazing vehicle. Now, definitely in terms of the way it drives, it's a little bit of a awkward vehicle you know again it looks high performance it absolutely can tackle most tracks it's very rear happy um i would definitely say that's maybe the main downside to it i wouldn't say it's necessarily the most beginner friendly vehicle you're definitely going to need some experience in terms of your driving skills uh, to be able to get the most out of this it's not like the porsche that i reviewed the other day where you can absolutely be flat out constantly and never really have to worry about the car getting away from you this thing will attempt to try and throw you in the barrier if you're not too careful and you're just a bit too heavy footed but in terms of the overall performance it's absolutely fantastic it really is a great performing car it feels special it looks special in terms of the brakes it's going to quite easily you know get you stopped for all the corners and such like i said just the only real downside from a performance standpoint is that tail happiness that it will you know possibly break away and you will need to kind of edge on the side of caution um, to kind of get the most out of this vehicle and definitely be confident behind the wheel in terms of the car itself though we can't really talk about the lfa without listening to that insane exhaust note so have a listen to this So yes, in terms of the overall noise of this thing, it is absolutely iconic. I would say this is perhaps one of the most well-known exhaust notes and uh, engine notes that has ever been created. The Lexus LFA and that screaming V10, absolutely revving up to 9,000 RPM, very aggressive, very brutal sounded. You know, kind of brings you back to the, you know, Formula One cars of the sort of early, you know, 2000s and such with that absolutely insane sort of scream that it produces i think it sounds absolutely fantastic and yes polyphony nailed it yes it is perhaps one of the most iconic sounding vehicles ever created so yes they did absolutely you know nail that in terms of the looks of this vehicle though it's definitely just one of those vehicles that i guess at first i never really appreciated when i first saw this and obviously it was on all the programs it was on all the sort of you know car review websites and people were just saying how you know amazing this vehicle is and how special um it really is when it first released i really didn't necessarily get the hype of this vehicle and it's definitely a vehicle that's kind of grown on me over time i think the more it's you know kind of got older the more i've learned to appreciate just how you know technically advanced this vehicle is is how special it is and in terms of the looks itself it really has kind of you know just grown on me um, as time has gone on again i just couldn't necessarily appreciate it uh, when it first released and i think that was just mainly just due to the badge you know you've got the likes of ferrari lamborghini all at the time that are synonymous with producing these ridiculous supercars and then along comes lexus with the lexus lfa and it's just like hmm uh yeah i don't really know how to feel about this but like i said as time's gone on i've just come along to appreciate not only the looks of the vehicle but the performance and just how unique this car was it really feels like it's just kind of one of those cars that really kind of just arrived and i don't feel like we'll see much or anything at all like this really ever again it's just such a unique and special car and in terms of gt7 it performs like you'd expect it to so yes it is an absolutely fantastic car as it comes across the line to finish up the standard version lap so we're going to head over and see how this thing ranks on our lap time leaderboard now it doesn't actually creep into the overall leaderboard like the porsche did uh, the other day this six in the uh, 600 pp category with 590.98 performance points on sports hard tires and does manage to place itself second just behind the gtr nismo which is around about seven years newer and obviously you know very much a full-blown track vehicle it's just absolutely mental what that car does and the lexus lf FA does post a respectable second position beating the likes of the dodge viper gts hj 20 uh, 220 and so on but obviously we're not done there we're going to go for the fully upgraded version and i think this is what surprised me most about this vehicle you know i didn't expect this thing to feature really that much in terms of aero and customizability you know it's already a car that is putting out a ridiculous amounts of amounts of performance 
but it can be turned up. So I went for a full race build, you know, trying to get it with that race spec, which is entirely possible and makes this car even sweeter uh, that you can basically, you know, turn it from a road car to a full-blown race car. And it, just in terms of the performance, the sound, you know, it's all kind of turned up to the max with a Lexus LFA, and it's an insanely fast vehicle. Now, the good thing about putting the upgrades on and, you know, tweaking the aero and such is the fact that this then does kind of remove that whole jerkiness at the rear, you know, it's not really a track for the vehicle in terms of the high speed ring. Obviously, you can see there where it's sort of wobbling about, but definitely in terms of the slow corners where obviously the downforce isn't in full effect and such, it really does kind of counteract that whole sort of twitchy rear end that this car suffered from, allowing you to get some pretty insane track builds going but again just like the porsche it's one of those cars that really needs to be sort of fine-tuned for each individual track i'd say stuff like high banked uh, tracks like daytona high speed ring and stuff don't really suit the car whilst they're great for the top speed of this thing um again it just sits so low that you'd have to absolutely botch it by putting the uh, ride height far too high and it really does set the car uh, quite unstable but in terms of the track to track performance as long as you're able to sort of dial in the car and fine tune it then in all honesty you're in for a surprise this is an insanely fast car probably even more potential on a track than the Porsche that we reviewed the other day so in terms of its fully modified lap time it's not looking too great 762.96 pp on racing softs 105.506 losing out to the Porsche that we reviewed the other day which also did have to have a few um, sort of you know ride height changes and stuff to allow it to not get caught on the archers uh, but definitely a respectable time and it's really not you know kind of showing off the full potential of the lfa in terms of just outright the most ridiculous and fastest when it's fully upgraded i would certainly say it's a very close match between the lfa and the uh, dodge demon so the lexus lfa was it worth the hype in the end absolutely yes this is a legendary vehicle i'm so glad to see it in gt7 it's just one of those cars that again for me has grown on me over time some people have, may have loved it since day one um, but for me it's definitely been a slow burn and all these years later after you know this car's been released i've definitely learned to appreciate it and definitely learned to appreciate it more since seeing it in gt7 it's absolutely awesome you should definitely buy this and it was absolutely worth the wait thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one take care guys peace